So Cricket Life Stories with me, Neil Kagram. Today we're joined by Josh Snappett. Josh, how's things going? Very well, thank you. Enjoying being at Finchley Cricket Club. Glorious sunny day. So yeah, looking forward to looking forward to the next bit of time we've got together. Yeah, perfect day for it. So Josh, you're going to give us a batting masterclass, some batting tips for all. Before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about your career. You came through the Middlesex junior system, went through the university system before getting the professional contract with Worcester. Talk us through it. So yeah, I, as I say, Middlesex through and through. I uh, was really fortunate to grow up in our pathway here in the UK and here in London. And uh, from there, Middlesex really supported me through some formative years. Club cricket was a major part of my development as well. Uh, and for me, going through to University at Oxford Brooks was being a part of the UCCE programme as it was back then, uh, really helped take my game to the next level. So for me, being able to understand and learn about the game in a fantastic environment helped me grow to be who I am. And that allowed me to open the doors to, to some first class cricket and a really high standard of competitive cricket that um, that, that system provided. And for me, I got picked up at, at Worcester, uh, originally as a backup keeper. I spent five years on the staff there and, and that again, just taught me so much about the game, taught me a huge amount about learning. I went through my coach education program and, and went through my level three at 18 and level four at, at 27, 28 years old. And, and that really was where my coaching career was able to come back to, to, uh, to supporting young cricketers. Um, so as I say, now working within Tendulkar Middlesex Global Academy in, in our global head coach role, we're able to support a huge amount of cricketers and coaches with, uh, with what we think is a huge amount of knowledge that Middlesex and Sachin are able to bring together. Yeah, it's a fantastic system. We'll put all the links in the description below. So whoever wants to check it out, please do. But when it comes to coaching, can you talk us through your philosophies before we get into the actual drills? So the first thing's a really obvious thing, but it's helping people be the best version of themselves that they can be. Allowing their strengths to be as strong as they can, but also allowing that uniqueness to flourish and come through. No two cricketers that have ever been at the top of the game you look at the two best batters, the two best bowlers, the two best fielders, the two best wicket keepers. In time, they've never been the same. And so being able to look at what individuals do to help them be really good is what I like to, to support. Helping people understand themselves, because as soon as they cross that rope and they're on, the, they're on the ground, they're on their own. So being able to make their own decisions, be independent, but have that motivation and work ethic to learn and to grow and to improve, not just in being a good cricketer, but also in being a good person as well. Josh, can't wait to get into this batting masterclass. Let's go. So what we're going to look at here with batting is around decision-making mindset and how a young player might set up a really simple and effective game plan. Batting is about being in control. It's about staying in, it's about scoring runs, and it's about allowing yourself the best opportunity to be effective. First of all, let's look at judgment of length. I've got a really simple drill set up with three sets of cones. My first line here, line one, line two is on a good length, line three is on just back of a length of a short ball. I'm going to look to, to play a few balls and I'm going to set my mindset up based around the three different lengths that I might be facing. So if I get a ball that's pitched up and a half volley, my way of playing it might not be your way, but my way of playing is to look to attack that ball quite straight with a, with a vertical bat. The next line is when I'm going to respect that to say that that's a good length and I'm going to look to defend that or leave that depending on the line. And then if it's a short ball, I'm going to look to simply play that off the back foot. So an alternative option to playing based on the length is looking at the line of the ball and how that influences the shots that you may play. Sometimes when you're facing a swing bowler, or a, uh, a medium pace bowler, the line of the ball is really important to understand with the body positions you're getting yourself into and the shots that you're trying to play. So we've got a great setup here at the moment with this time of day, midday, where we've got our three lines on the pitch that are, that are drawn into the AstroTurf and we've conveniently got a shadow line from the bar giving us a really nice line for, for fourth stump. So I'm gonna to look to use those at the moment and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna face six to ten balls here if the ball is on the line of the stumps i'm going to look to play back through straight to mid on back past the bowler's right hand if the ball is outside the line of that i'm going to look to defend it 
more towards extra cover. I'm going to allow myself to play off the front foot, back foot, without really assessing that too much, but it's going to be based on the line of the ball with where I'm trying to hit it. Again, someone might hit a straight ball through extra cover brilliantly. In that case, set your parameters to say if it bounces here, you're looking to play through a certain area. And it might be that if the ball is on off stump, say a Jonathan Trot from previous era would play a ball from off stump, fourth stump, through mid wicket brilliantly. So find the line of the ball that you're looking to play and set your target areas based on that. Let's have a look at how that might work out. What I'm looking to do is really assess the line of the ball and understand what gap am I trying to hit in the field. It's going to help me set my mindset right and allow my body to react. We don't want to be thinking consciously about our technique when the bowler's letting go of the ball. We don't want to be thinking about our grip or a high front elbow or bending over that front knee. We want to be thinking more about where's the ball being bowled? Where's it landing? Where's it arriving to? So what we're going to look at now is about understanding how as a batter you can be flexible and adaptable in a game. For me, when you're batting, it's about staying in the moment. What does that mean? That means focusing on the part that you need to focus on right now. So when I move on to this next drill, I'm gonna to look to stay as present as I can do to only think about where the ball is landing and about how I want to feel as I'm moving my body. If the ball lands inside this box on a bowler's good line and length, I'm gonna to look to be in as much control defensively as I can be. If the ball is short or full of this box, I'm going to allow myself to play whatever shot comes naturally. I'm going to just try and react. I'm not going to set it up too, uh, too strictly. I'm just going to be focused on what I think is a good length and allow myself to be instinctive when the ball is short or, or pitched up. Okay, so that's right in the middle of that box and I've really committed to going forward. The first couple of balls were just closer to the back of the edge of that box. So for me, playing off the back foot felt right, whereas that one was right in it and I really wanted to go forward. If I had gone back to that or tried to attack it, I'd have been at peace with that. I'd recognize it, it's a training session still. I'd find my way of picturing that ball again in my mind, thinking if I saw that same line and length again, I'd just look to really force myself forward. And again, recognizing that the more I can be in control of my decision based on the line and the length, then the better chance I've got at being in control in the middle to allow myself to bat for a longer period of time. So I don't know if you noticed on that one, that last ball was actually right in the length. But now I've started to be a bit more comfortable, feel a bit more in, I actually attacked that ball. Now sometimes that's a good decision to make. As we feel more comfortable, as we feel like we're in control, then allowing that margin for error for the bowler to be a lot smaller, is going to help me score more runs. So where that ball was slightly wide, was still a good length, but it was just on the outside edge of that box. For me, that felt comfortable to attack it. The difficult part is, if that's not my plan, I didn't stick to it. So what I need to do, instead of playing outside of my plan, I need to recognise that actually I'm feeling okay, I'm moving okay. I'm not going to try and go through the gears any more than, than I already am. But I'm just going to make that bowler's margin for error a bit smaller. So mentally, I'm going to say, instead of it landing inside this box where I'm looking to defend, I'm going to say that Now if the ball lands inside that box here, that's my defensive option. Still going to look to try and defend a good ball. But then now if the ball's a bit wider, a bit fuller, or a bit shorter, then that's going to influence the shots I play. So that's just clipped the cone, just on the inside. Still looking to defend. Good, so I've clearly landed in that box making sure I defended it. For me, these cones, 
in a way, are certainly a distraction. They're challenging me. They're making me work pretty hard. I'm clearly worried about if the ball bounces off that. Differently, it's going to make it uncomfortable. But that might simulate for me a bit of a, a nip off the pitch, a bit of swing in the air that I maybe didn't anticipate. But I've still got to stick to my plan because my plan's been set. So it's done a bit off the cone. I've just tried to stay in control and defend because that was my plan. The more you do these sorts of training sessions, the more you put yourself under pressure, the more you play and assess after every ball before you face your next ball, the better you're going to be about controlling your thinking so that you're able to ignore some of the distractions that go on around you. The dream state is to be in uh, what they call the zone. The zone is ultimately when you're able to stop thinking consciously and allow yourself to react very instinctively to the ball and play a shot that is still appropriate for you and the stage of game that you're in. So that zone is a, is a very difficult space to be in. It takes a lot of practice to get there. How can you switch off but still react within your plan? So I'm gonna look just to play a few balls now without thinking too much. I'm gonna allow myself to uh, have a bit of fun, to play some shots that I don't always play and to um, and just, just let what happens happen under no pressure other than the fact that my standards that I want to produce, I want them to be high.